So it's no secret that MSNBC absolutely loathes Bernie Sanders. And any time there's an MSNBC host or a guest that makes disparaging comments about Bernie Sanders, Jeff Miami on Twitter will clip out that segment and he will post it. Now, there's been enough video clips to where Winkle the Bernie Bro, who also is on Twitter and YouTube, took all of these clips that were shared by Jeff Miami and he created one entire compilation. And these are all, mind you, recent clips of MSNBC hosts basically just shitting on Bernie Sanders. And again, we know that they hate Bernie, but really you get some much needed perspective at how big this problem is when you see all of these clips back to back. And it's just wow. So the quality isn't the best, both audio and visual, but I think that it's still good enough to where this is really important and um, I want to showcase this. So again, this is a compilation not created by me, but created by Winkle, the Bernie bro, who used clips uploaded by uh, Jeff Miami. Definitely follow those guys on Twitter. So let's watch and then I will discuss my thoughts uh, when we return. Can I bring up the donkey in the room? Bernie? No. Bernie Sanders makes my skin crawl. The Sanders fading is a bigger story than people have given her credit for. The previous uh, set of numbers about Kamala Harris seems to suggest that Bernie bros are actually a real thing. <laughs> He's just waving his arms around, talking about revolution and all you, where we are going, we won't need roads. I mean, I am. One of the things I, I always hear from folks um, who aren't necessarily on the burning bus, so to speak, is, is that he's not really a Democrat. I saw Bernie Sanders trying to raise money off of it. Yeah, my, my, my timeline's gonna be on fire. I thought it was horrible. And do you see any crossover, at least in those who are at his events, who kind of look and sound like Trump supporters. When you say he attracts those who feel like they're struggling, they're struggling to be heard and get their bills paid and their voices heard, that sounds like a Trump voter. I, I see him as sort of a, a not pro-woman candidate. And some oh, people say wait, that but, you but, 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 Hillary so, Clinton's candidacy. Well, Bernie Sanders has done nothing between 2016 and today to expand his base, to expand his his policies. He seemed like a socialist from the 1950s yelling at people um, in the same um, screechy voice, without smiling, without any kind of personal connection. Bernie Sanders has been talking about these same policies essentially since he's been in public service for the past 25, 30 years, but he actually hasn't done anything to pass them, right? He's talked a lot about them, but we have not seen any of these policies signed into law. What and happened for, with Hillary and and, and what's his name? Bernie. Exactly. I, you would take the risk. I am you excited. Might Donald Trump Are you again. asking out of every candidate? He's also saying the same thing he said in 2016 this time around. I think that's not working. That's exactly the point I was going to make. I think he kind of got lost in the shuffle. Other people have kind of taken those issues away from him, and he looked like the angry man in the center of the stage saying, get off my lawn. I think he comes off as, as mean. I think he's disparaging. A socialist candidate is more dangerous to this company, country as far as the strength and well-being of our country than Donald Trump. I would vote for Donald Trump, a despicable <laughs> human being. Mm. No, I you act, won't. I, I, let me tell you Stop something. Stop yourself. Let, uh, feel like I've been raped. Isn't that nice? and so, I mean, some of the things that they said here are so wrong, so indefensible, that if you removed the MSNBC logo and replaced it with the Fox News logo, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Because if you're going to criticize a candidate, you'd think that the supposedly intellectual left wing, which is a joke, you know, a cable news outlet, would base that criticism off of policy disagreements. But they're not even trying to create bullshit policy arguments against Bernie Sanders. And they do oftentimes, right? Chuck Todd will lie or, you know, he'll skew statistics and facts about Medicare for all. But what you saw here for the most part was just straight up ad hominem attacks lobbed against Bernie Sanders. Let's look at some of these here. Sanders makes my skin crawl. That's a really recent one. Sanders fading is a bigger story than people give it credit for. He's in second place. How is he fading? Bernie supporters look and sound like Trump supporters. Cute. Bernie Sanders has done nothing between 2016 and today to expand his base. Bullshit. He seemed like a socialist from the 1950s that's screeching at people. Uh, I think he comes off as mean. A socialist is more dangerous to this company, I mean country, nice Freudian slip there from Donnie Deutsch, than Donald Trump. So these are all nothing more than ad hominem attacks. 
Now, you would think or hope at least that since these, these attacks lack substance, they wouldn't actually land, right? Because if you truly want to convince someone who is theoretically more intelligent if they're tuning into MSNBC as opposed to like Fox News, which I think is measurably worse, then you would think, okay, well, these aren't that big of a deal because they're not based in substance. They're just ad hominem criticisms of Bernie Sanders. But that would be wrong because the media acts as gatekeepers. And what they're doing here is slowly but surely priming their viewers to think about Bernie Sanders negatively. So people may not necessarily have a cogent reason as to why they oppose Bernie Sanders specifically, but they just know based on the cable news outlet that they watch regularly that there's enough people that just have this visceral response to Bernie Sanders and dislike Bernie Sanders. So they're in effect being primed to believe that Bernie Sanders is just bad. So, I mean, this is the way that the media operates. They act as gatekeepers. The media can kill off a political campaign simply by not covering a candidate. And they almost did this in 2016. There was a blackout of Bernie Sanders, but he was so popular. There was so much grassroots support that he somehow managed to overcome the blackout and still almost beat Hillary Clinton. But this is why the media, it's incredibly important. And I know that a lot of you watching, your response is going to be, well, this is why... I don't get my news from, you know, um, MSNBC or CNN or Fox News anymore. I tune into independent news outlets, and that's great. But the problem is that most people don't do that. Like, most people, if you go onto the street and you ask them, hey, do you watch MSNBC or The Young Turks? They're going to say, what is The Young Turks? Most people don't know about these indie news outlets. Nobody knows who Mike from the Humanist Report is. Nobody knows who David Dole from the Rational National is or Kyle from Secular Talk is. Like, we represent such a small percentage of political viewers, on, and even though it's a fairly large audience, right? I'm not trying to downplay what we've accomplished, but cable news has a monopoly on political information, news, and discourse in this country. And sure, we're starting to make some progress by pushing back, but by and large, if this is going to be the view that's reflected by a lot of people on MSNBC, then this is going to be carried on to a lot of the electorate, which is extremely problematic. I mean, even CNN hasn't been as bad as MSNBC lately. They've been bringing on people who are progressive. I'm kind of going to walk back that statement because they did actually platform a Nazi, Richard Spencer, but I mean, what I'm saying is they've brought on Anna Kasparian. They've brought on Jenk Uger, whereas MSNBC rarely, if ever, brings on progressives. I mean, they have Sam Cedar, who is maybe the only progressive contributor that I know who supports Bernie Sanders, but how often do they invite Sam Cedar on? I mean, we just, we don't get the analysis from real progressives. We get people who self-identify oftentimes as progressive, but I mean, that label has been watered down. What I'm talking about is real left-wing voices who are supportive of someone like Bernie Sanders, who support democratic socialism. We don't ever get that on MSNBC. We just don't get it. Why? Because this isn't a news outlet. I mean, sure, it, it purports to be a news outlet, but this is a business. CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, these are businesses. They're not news outlets. They have a goal to increase profits, and their profits are derived largely from advertisers. So these advertisers are corporate entities that do not like Bernie Sanders because he wants to increase their taxes, impose stricter regulation on them, and, you know, labor laws on them, and they don't like that. So MSNBC, CNN, they know that if they start covering Bernie Sanders fairly, that isn't necessarily advertiser friendly for lack of a better word see on indie media we have a certain level of restrictions right we have to make sure that we're advertiser friendly if we want to be monetized so i know that if i put syria in the title of my video that's just automatic demonetization um if i talk about racism or white supremacy automatically demonetized every single time 10 times out of 10 but nonetheless the difference is that there's been so many indie media outlets 
that have outsourced the funding for their show, so we rely on Patreon. Whereas there's no alternative source of funding for MSNBC. It's advertisers and pretty much advertisers only. And so they know that if they want to keep the gravy train rolling, they've got to not piss off their advertisers. It's why, you know, Bill O'Reilly wasn't fired from Fox News after years of horrific propaganda and inciting violence against abortion doctors. Remember Tiller Tiller the baby killer? Um, he was only fired once enough advertisers fled. It's why Laura Ingram, for example, she apologized to the victim of the Parkland shooting after she attacked him when he called on advertisers to flee her show. It's the one thing that gets YouTube to change their policies if enough advertisers flee. You know, so advertisers, they, they have a monopoly on funding. This is where all the money comes from. So that's why we're seeing this. But it's harmful. This, you know, this really degrades political discourse because we're not hearing from a substantial portion of the American electorate here. Now, in totality, like cable news isn't the only source of political information, but for some people, yeah, it is. I mean, you can talk to a lot of progressives and I've talked to progressives who say, look, my mom literally just watches MSNBC. That's where all of her news comes from. And if that's your only source, then you're not going to realize that Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan is actually better for you. You're going to think, oh, this must be bad because the media outlet that I trust, which is ostensibly left-wing, tells me it is. So this is a problem, and it's really difficult to suggest a way to push back against it because we're living in a capitalist system. We operate within the confines of capitalism, and profit is always going to be the main motivator at the end of the day. And that's what these cable news outlets are motivated by, you know, that profit money. So um, the, the best that we can do is uh, speak out against it, try to educate people so that way they educate themselves and not just take whatever some cable news pundit says about Bernie Sanders at face value. And that's not to say that you should just listen to Mike from the Humanist Report and uh, take whatever I say as gospel. No, the goal is to get people to think for themselves and to use us as a resource, one of many resources, preferably, uh, where they use the information that we're providing and the insight that we're providing to where they can kind of build their own political identity and think for themselves and reason in a way that they believe is best for them and not based on the analysis of someone else who may or may not have an agenda that doesn't align with their own self-interest. So I'll leave that there. It's frustrating. It's depressing to see these types of compilations with cable news just shitting on Bernie Sanders. But, you know, um, he may have enough grassroots support to where he can just overcome all of this. But it doesn't make it, you know, any easier for us to help him win. It sucks. It's hard, you know. But, you know, we, we just have to keep going. We have no choice. You could support The Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>